How are you ladies and gentlemen? My name is Engineer Noel Ngoi, the writer of the book Technologies are the Arts. This book explains the reason behind technological backwardness in Africa and the way forward towards technological development. The problem with African intellectuals is that we are so busy with the sciences. You know, sciences, the function of science is to, to provide explanation on behavior of things and the reason behind those behaviors. But technology is the way of doing things, the way you apply tools or machines or systems to, to solve a, a, a certain problem. So you may have all the sciences in the world, but uh, without having technology. So uh, that's why I wrote this book, so that I may try to sensitize the African intellectuals that they should invest, invest in skills and not only in the knowledge or in the sciences. My presentation now is how can African countries prepare its youth to be more competitive in technological development. You know, if we can invest in, uh, in our youth, then Africa will develop technologically. You know that 70% uh, of the African population is consisted of youth. So 70% of, of African citizens are active people whom if we can invest much in them so that they may, I mean, you, you can invest in their skills and that they may be more pr productive. Africa will be able to compete technologically with other continents. So Africa is rich, is rich more than other co continents because 70% of its citizens are youth. Africans should understand that knowledge of science alone is not enough to make African competitive in technologies. Skills development should carry equal or greater weight than the sciences. Therefore, Africa, Africans should develop the art of doing things. You know, Africa is preparing a lot of intellectuals who have only the knowledge, who can provide explanation, but they can do nothing. And those intellectuals are not cooperating with those having skills. People having skills are the technicians and the artisans. We need to invest much in the artisans and te te technicians. We need uh, also to invest in what we call sympathetic sociological eth ethos. You know, for a society to develop technologically, you need uh, three things. You must have social need. Do people need that technology which you are looking for? Secondly, social resources. Do we have the required resources? It means that when we are talking about resources, we are talking about maybe financial resources, uh, raw, availability of raw materials, and the availability of technical skills, and the technology itself. And, on, and the third thing which we need is sympathetic sociological ethos. Sympathetic sociological ethos is the readiness of the society to contribute towards technological development. You know, during the Industrial Revolution in, in Europe, uh, what we learned from that Industrial Revolution is that uh, the, what the middle income people invested heavily on technological development. I'm talking about the doctors, the lawyers, the engineers, the workers. Those workers were ready to contribute what they had to the, to, towards technological development. But that item is missing in Africa. For example, maybe I have my son. He has discovered a certain technology. He wants to start his factory. I don't, I'm not sure whether people can contribute towards I mean, his investment in, in that factory. But you, if my son wants to marry and ask people to contribute, for example, in, in a Tanzanian society, many people will be ready to contribute so that he may marry. So we are missing what you call sympathetic sociological ESO. And for that sympathetic sociological ESO, we don't need people who are very wealthy. We just need people who are ready to contribute towards technological development. We need to also to encourage volunteering among the youth. Yeah, because sometimes 
Uh, they used to really to study a lot in, in our colleges uh, in order to pass the exam, exams, but when they come for training, they are not ready to work. You know, people think that passing exam, examinations uh, is a big deal, more than ability to contribute to, to us solving actual problems, which is not true. So, also in the in the family, we need to to provide a, a, an important education in your family to our youth. You need to to involve our youth towards actual family activities. For example, it is farming, or maybe the family have got shop, or have got a factory, or whatever the family is doing. The youth, our youth, should be involved in that because. If they will be involved in that and then they go to get education, bear in mind the opportunity, opportunities available in, in the families, then it is possible for them to employ themselves and it is possible for us to develop technologically. We need to, to emphasize on family businesses. They say that uh, uh, in the Middle East, 80% of the families are of the businesses are family business, but in Africa only 20% of the businesses are family business. That is because we have the right, the wrong mindset in our in our families. For example, if maybe if a father started a business and he maybe he passed away, every child would like to have those resources on his or herself, and that is a big problem. But if we look at the Indians the Japanese and the people from the Middle East, East. when the, the owner of the family dies, the family, the, the family business still will continue because they have got discipline. They don't misuse, I mean, what was developed by the elder of the family. But uh, that is a problem to us. For example, in Tanzania, I have seen some family businesses like uh, for example, we've got Jandu Plumber. They are a very good plumbing company which makes tanks, uh, which covers for, say, for chambers, piping systems. And I knew the Jandu Plumbers from 1979, but I think that family, that family company could have started maybe in 1950s, I don't know, or in 1960s. But it is still there. So family businesses is business are a very important important ingredient towards technological development, and we need to encourage that. Then we need to, to have frequent meeting between elders and youth on business and technological opportunities. You know, we Africans we take our our, our children to schools and colleges so that they may be employed. But it is, we don't take them to school so that they may develop, say, businesses or different technologies. So, technologies, so we need to have different mindset. And I have seen, because I was a lecturer in St. Joseph College of Engineering, and when I was lecturing, I liked to have Indian students very much because they come with, it, I mean, business ideas. And when they come to study, they know what they are looking for when compared to African students who just come to be employed, to, 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 I mean to get education and to be employed. Then we need to have a brainstorming culture among the youth. You know, we cannot have a good technological development if we don't brainstorm. You know, many technologies uh, Combined, maybe they, are, they consist of different type of knowledges and skills. For example, maybe a car. There is an electrical system, there is a mechanical system. And any big factory or industry needs different, I mean, knowledges and skills. So if people will build a culture of brainstorming, then it will be possible for us to develop technologically. By the way, Thomas Edison one of the renowned scientists who discovered the electric bulb had got 
built a brainstorming house where he was employing people and he was, he was getting ideas from different people. So brainstorming is a very important and sure way of getting technological and business ideas. Elders should, elders should not shy away from discussions of technological or business ideas. You know, we, are, we let the youth, I mean, find the ideas for themselves and we tell them that they should be innovative because they are not involved, they are not employed. But the truth is that we should not let the, let the youth to, I mean, to be innovative themselves. Elders also should participate in development of innovative ideas. Then we need to create competition, competitions among the family youth. Uh, for example, if we get somebody in the family who has got better ideas, then we should support him or her to develop a new business based on those ideas. Uh, uh, here I was talking about the family. But uh, also we need to talk about the education system. We, we need to to introduce education for self-reliance. During Mwalim Nyerere era, he created educa education which system which he called education for self-reliance. For example, when we are going to secondary schools, studying, we are, went, we are going to, with the whole, we are going to farming, we used to farm, so we knew, we knew how to, I mean, to produce things in the farm and went to national service in the army and we are told to produce, that is education for self-reliance. But also we had a technical education, business education, agricultural education within ordinary level secondary school. So people were preparing, I mean, to be self-reliant, I mean, during the early, I mean, during their youth, when they are just in secondary school. So it was possible that somebody may graduate having an idea and being able to develop his own business and be, being able to sustain him, his or herself. And then, uh, education should strain on schools and not on knowledge alone. One of the great mistakes we made in Tanzania is to abandon those technical schools, ag agricultural schools, business schools, because for example, myself, I was in technical school. When I came, I, I finished in secondary school, or ordinary level secondary school. I was able to do survey, I was able to prepare drawings, and I was employed. While I was waiting for results to go to technical college, I was in, employed in a water supply system, uh, water supply company, and I was a surveyor. I, I was surveying the pipeline. I was setting out the pumping station, I mean, fence for pumping station. I was preparing the drones. But now people are fed with much knowledge, but they are not given skills on how to do, I mean, the actual work. And that is a problem. Uh, the science should be stimulated to identify actual technological problems and opportunities uh, associated. During those times when we were studying technical school, we are, we are taught in chemistry as others, mathematics, but uh, we do not study physics, we are studying engineering science, the fundamentals of engineering science, and we are learning on strengths of materials for machines, for buildings. We are, we are we learning about maybe angular motion, gears, uh, machines, drive system. We, we are learning actual the science which leads to actual problem solving. So it was possible to, to understand how the machines functions, fun, function in just the ordinary secondary school. But uh, I don't know who bewitched us and then we removed that educational system. And now, of course, very few are studying and it is not concentrated as we were doing. So we are preparing people with a lot of theories, but they cannot, I mean, understand actual machines, actual structures, and how to, to do them. We need to cultivate a, a reading culture. You know, a reading culture is a very big problem, especially in Tanzania. People normally study in order to pass exams, but people don't study in order to look solutions. And we need to train our youth to study. 
and we need also to prepare maybe uh, competition for book reading because what is taught in, in, in colleges and universities and schools is not enough to, for actual, I mean, actual life. When I was studying at the University of the Islam, I remember one of our lecturers known as Tokil Su was saying that if we want to be taught everything here, you need to stay a few hundred years in the college. So we need to prepare people who are ready, who have a reading culture so that they may go abreast with the with technological development. We need to create imagination and idea, idea generation. We need to generate, to make youth who are ready to generate ideas instead of just claiming what have been, I mean, prescribing in our education systems. And then we need to have supplementary books to cultivate an understanding of actual technologies. That is a very big, I mean, a, a very important thing for us. And also, we who are elderly and who have got a big experience should write books, and those books should be able to, I mean, to sensitize or what people should do actually in order to solve actual problems. And then we need to create, a, a, we need a, Africa to prepare educative YouTube accounts. I have noted that when I'm looking for any technological, I mean, problem, I want to understand what to do things. The education I'm getting, I'm not getting from Africa, black Africans. Most of them I'm getting from Indians. Indians have, have used YouTube very effective on training others on technological development. And also we need to start to, I mean, to encourage the youth that they should, I mean, go in YouTube and look for technological solutions to their society. So we also need to invite trainers from industry to train specific subjects in university. You know, you know sometimes the lecturers in university, they just tie themselves. They think they are the one, they are, they are the only one who are supposed to train the youth and they think that they have the solution. But there are people for them from the industry who have got the solutions to different technologies. And these need to be invited without asking them or maybe on the education system maybe or the, the levels of passes they got from the university. Because we may have a lot of passes from the university but you, yet you, you have no solution. And then we need to introduce options Opt option subjects from different industries. As I said, that we need to invite seasoned, I mean, technological, I mean, personnel from the industry. Who you may find somebody uh, stay maybe 20, 30, 40 years.